Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a Sony VHS Hi-Fi Stereo VCR model SLV740HF and as you can see on the tag right here the unit was shipped, bought off eBay, possibly dropped. Tape goes in and then ejects back out. So let's try to put a tape in it and see what happens. So we'll power the unit up. The light lights up. I get a display. And sure enough, the tape goes in and comes right back out. I hear the cylinder motor run, but nothing else. So what could be going on? It should be trying to load. Actually, when the tape goes in, it should do a reel check. It should pull the tape in each direction to make sure that number one, the tape is good, and number two, it can see the reels move. It'll pull the take-up reel and look at the supply reel, and then it'll pull the supply reel and look at the take-up reel. Well, let's go ahead and pop the top off and look inside. All right, so let's drop a tape in it now and let's see what happens. Cylinder runs up, but I see nothing else happening. Well, I know the loading motor has to be working okay because the main loading motor is what takes the tape in. So why is nothing else happening? I don't even see the capstan motor trying to run. So let's go ahead and see if the bottom comes off of this unit where we can get access to the bottom of the circuit board or whether we have to pull the complete mechanism out of the unit to see what's going on. Well, I can tell you already that we're gonna have to pull the mechanism out because I see a circuit board underneath the loading tracks on both sides, so I know I'm not gonna be able to gain access to the bottom of the mechanism without taking the mechanism out. Just by pulling the bottom off, it's not gonna help one bit. So, uh, usually these come out pretty easily. They're pretty thoughtfully designed when they were manufactured. So it's just gonna be a matter of, we'll pop the front panel off right here, just these clips and release the front. And then normally there's just uh, some screws to take out and the mechanism unplugs. There's a plug back here. The head, ace head unplugs, the fully raised head unplugs. And then normally it just lifts right out of the unit. So let's go ahead and pop off the front panel. All right, and the front panel is completely loose. There's no cables or anything connecting this one on. We did suffer a loss of a foot in the process. And of course the jog uh, play stop ring came off. All right, so now we'll just go ahead and pop off a couple of screws. Probably have to move this out of the way. Unplug the fully raised head. This is the preamplifier assembly for the video heads. We'll just unplug that. And this is the audio control erase head. We'll unplug that, swing those wires back out of the way. The ground screw back here. And we'll go ahead and pop off the bottom because there might be a screw holding that in place. And there are two ground screws. And yes, look, there are screws mounted to the circuit board that you have to remove to get this unit out. Last but not least, this little bracket can actually just be swung out of the way. It just holds onto the circuit board. Oh good, now it lifts up. And if all the screws are out, we should be able to tilt it up and completely out. And we'll take a peek at the bottom of it. Something is jammed up in here because I'm trying to turn and it will not, there it goes. Oh, something was just bound up really bad from sitting. Now it turns freely. What was bound up? Well, maybe we'll just pump this apart and lube it up a little bit and see how it goes. Okay, so now that I've got it freed up, I do believe the problem was probably in this limited slip clutch right here because previously I could move this gear back and forth with no problem, but once I got it out, it acted like this clutch was froze up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this clip off and we'll open up this clutch down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and release this, which is the belt tensioner. I'll just go ahead and peel off the belt. Now this is a ribbed belt instead of a V-belt for more traction so it doesn't slip. Now on this clutch, this is just pressed onto the shaft, so we may just have to take it and wiggle it around to get it to release. It may require a bit of force. There it's coming. So I've got the spring and then the press fit fitting.
Okay, so this one doesn't have a felt pad, but it does have a slip that was stuck. So that tells me that's where the problem was lying, is that this little disc that's a friction disc had just gotten stuck on here. So we'll go ahead and clean that off. Once again, with some acetone, add a small bit of lubricant to it, a little bit of machine oil, and put it back together and see how we do. Once again, Pyrex dish. Just a tad of acetone, cotton swab. And we'll go ahead and clean off all the old lube. Clean the shaft as well. Next, we'll go ahead and clean off the old lube off the friction disc. We'll flip it over and do the other side. Trying to rotate this to get 100% of it at the same time. One more time. We'll hit it one more time with the clean side of the cotton swab. Okay, next I'm just going to take a little tiny droplet of machine oil. We'll go around right here. We'll drop the disc back into place. Tiniest bit of oil here. And we're going to add some on the shaft as well to keep the shaft lubricated. Now we'll just press this back into place. That's really good. It's flush with the end. That's exactly how I want it. Now for lubrication, we'll go ahead and add a drop of machine oil to the shaft here. The spring sets down in there. So I'm going to check the operation of this clutch. And it feels perfectly fine, so I'm going to leave that be. Next we'll go ahead and put it back together and put the retaining ring back on it. There, everything's lined back up. Snap the ring back on it. Okay, so next we'll go ahead and put the belt back on. I have the tensioner loose at this point. So I'm just going to bring the belt around the back side of the tensioner and peel it onto the pulley. Next we'll go ahead and just add a little bit of tension to it, not too much. We still want a little bit of belt deflection easily moved so that all this can move very freely on here. But not so much that the belt wants to flap and uh, skip teeth. So it looks good, we got it all back together. We'll just put the mechanism back in now and we'll give it a go. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the cable from the head amp assembly and just take it out. It's actually easier to reassemble it with the head amp completely unplugged because this needs to be on top of this right here. So the screw goes into that. This is threaded. So back here on the back, this has to go underneath those tabs. And then the rest of the mechanism just sits right down on there. So we'll go ahead and put the head amp back in. There we go. We'll put the screws back in it now. One machine screw. One cable there. Plug in the full erase head. Plug in the audio control erase head. Make sure it moves freely. Plug in the video heads to the amplifier. Next we'll flip it over and put the screws in the bottom. Okay, once again, remember when you go to put the VHS door back in to open the door up. And on this one, it's on the left-hand side, this little tab right here. This finger right here has to sit underneath that tab to open the door. So make sure while you're inserting the, the front, you have the door open. Now let's go ahead and put the jog control knob back on and then the play stop button just pushes into place. The jog control goes around it and then the play stop goes in the middle. Let's power it on. We'll put the tape in it and see if we get better results. 
Yes. Play. Good. Stop. Fast forward. It's going to check to see how much tape it has left on each side by calculating the take up and supply motion. Stop. Rewind. Eject. Make sure it takes the tape back up. Perfect. Alright, so here's the tape I recorded back in 1986. So we'll get a shot on the video monitor over here. Here's some traffic. Some good old cars that you hardly ever see anymore. Anyhow, it's up and running. Works great. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.